I haven't read a book like this ever in my life. Okay, today we're going to talk about this book. It's called Everything the Light Touches by Jenis Pariah. It's narrated with the help of four different characters in four different timelines. First, we have Shai, who is living in the contemporary India, who have moved back from Delhi to Shillong in her hometown and now is finding new ways of living and experiences in Northeast India. Number two, Evelyn, who is a student in Cambridge University and is traveling to India to find a special plant in the colonial period. Then we have Goeth, a scientist from 1786 who had a non-mainstream view on how the nature should be studied. Then we have Linnaeus from 1732, a scientist who is responsible for plant classification in the scientific world. This book had recently been nominated for the JCB Prize and I can tell why. Me and my brother have always talked about this way of learning, the study approach of seeing things as they are and letting God teach us things and the nature speak for itself instead of being completely influenced by what, what is already there out there and is believed this book explored that way of thinking and i am impressed to see someone talk about this concept in such a beautiful manner and there have been people who've been talking about this for a very long time but unfortunately as the book rightly suggests knowledge is hierarchical and that is to say that not everyone's way of learning or their knowledge has considered scientific and hence been nullified and it has a lot to do with who that person is their economic or social status and often political status as well and honestly this concept was much more easier to understand as a woman because come on how many times our voices and our ideas have been nullified just because of who we are but that's a topic for another day let's get back to the book in the beginning when the point of view changed i really found it hard to understand where the hell this book was headed to but then the more i read about it i found out where it was headed to and i was like okay now i am a person who's not into botany at all not interested i'm so sorry it's just not for me and this book deals greatly with the botany world i mean it's not getting into details all the time but i was scared that i might lose interest in reading this book because i am not interested but the writing was so lyrical that it kept me hooked i'm not gonna lie i'm still struggling to understand the ending of the book why did <sighs> it end the way it ended. Is it simply a lack of closure for me or does it have a deeper meaning? Maybe if I ponder about it more, I will understand. But I don't know yet. Maybe it's an open ending and I hate open endings. Um, but I guess I'll figure it out. There's this part in the book where uh, one of the characters POV is written as whatever they've written in letters or diary. It's written kind of like, you know, how some people write poems like in this format. And honestly, I struggle to understand such kind of format. Like, uh, this is still fine, but like why? Why this? Maybe it's because of lack of understanding or knowledge from my end uh, about poetry. Um, I have never been a fan of such kind of, you know, writing style, like like format. Maybe because I'm more of a slam poetry kind of a person. This is where I really struggled in, in that one particular POV where sometimes the format just was like uh, really hard to understand because it wasn't the same as the formats followed before. Uh, so it was interesting uh, to have a different kind of format, but it was mm, not my thing. There's this part in the book where Shai, one of our main characters, is not so impressed while walking through uh, somebody's museum in Shillong. No, it's not in Shillong. Like she doesn't find it as entertaining or as intriguing as somebody else would, uh, as they're supposed to apparently. And this is what the book says. I don't tell him that wandering around his museum left me feeling a little like I do on walks in the forest. Everything distant, lined behind glass. I can't begin to tell you guys how much seen I felt with this coat and also comforted at the same time. Because nature is great, nature is amazing, it heals and it's the best thing in the world out there. But it doesn't speak to me. It has never felt familiar. At least not the forest, not the plants have never spoken to me that way. Maybe that is why I never like botany. I would love to stay around nature uh for like a retreat kind of a thing two months max and i'm out i used to think that i would not be able to sustain living in nature even for like two days because i used to get bored or like i felt homesick and i have been brought up in a city so well that recently i did get to visit the northeast and i traveled in the interiors of nagaland and one thing was clear i would definitely love one or two months retreat where i don't have to worry about the world and the city life and all of that and just live in peace and live that slow life because it's beautiful and now i definitely want to visit meghalaya also go to all these places that she's talked about in the book and uh, i hope all of them are real I mean, some of them definitely are, I know that for sure. Uh, but I would love to visit such kind of places because I know it's just, it's amazing. It's just, I would say it was a solid 4.5 stars. 